Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun and long time no see. Wow, has the last few weeks been insane? Um, I've been in, let's see, how, where have I been? In the last month, let's see, I was in uh, Missouri. I was in Oklahoma. I was in South Dakota. I was in Arizona. Um, and we had to get the house on the market to sell. So luckily it sold really quick. But um, my space is totally empty. I have my, uh, as you can see, there's no sewing machine in my table. Um, all the sewing machines are packed up except for my Stitch 510 that I was uh, stitching on. And honestly, I was supposed to make a video for you all for, uh, using rulers on my domestic machine. But I realized I packed everything up and I can't find it. <laughs> so um, it gave me a chance to do my, um, how I, my, what my design process, my quilting process kind of thinking, um, the part two video that I never got a chance to make because I was throwing things in boxes and sticking it in the garage. So, uh, maybe I'll post a photo of my space, like my thread bar, empty, my fabric storage shelves, almost empty. I kept it, you know, we staged it, but, um, I left a few things out, like, uh, Things that I know once we move, that I easy projects to work on, some paper PC stuff that I wanted to finish. Um, but most of all, everything just went into, started getting thrown into boxes. And um, yeah, I know I have those rulers somewhere and they're in a box, but there's a lot of boxes to go through. So I'm like, okay, we'll do it some other time. But um, yeah, like I said, it gives me a chance to finish this how like quilting process thing. I'm really excited for the second part um, because some of the ways some of the original ideas that I then went a totally different direction. I love how it turned out. So um, without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to, um, I have my iPad plugged in because it was at 40%. So hopefully it doesn't die out on us. Um, but I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll see you back here in a second. Before we turn, I almost forgot. Um, so if you haven't seen part one, it's up on my YouTube channel. You're already on YouTube, but it's on my YouTube channel. Um, I believe it's uh, my my quilting process or my design process part one. So this will be part two. Um, also, the quilt that I'm talking about, I have, um, did I, I want to say I posted pictures. God, it's a, been a whirlwind. Um, I think I posted pictures online of the quilt and um, the finished quilt and everything. If not, after this one does, I'll do it tomorrow. How about that? I'll do it tomorrow for sure. I'll go back through and see if I haven't, but I think I did. Um, and I actually get to see it in person after it's bound um, this week or next week. I'm going to Stitch House, full week of handy quilter they're doing. It's going to be super fun. Um, Shopstitchhouse.com if you are in the area or whatever. Uh, and it's in Plano, Texas. What was I going to say though? Um, oh, Social media, Adam So Fun, that's S E W on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you follow me there because it, you get a lot of photos and things that don't make it to the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe it's just a quick little video um, that's a minute and not 30 minutes. So um, we're going to turn you around. We'll see you back here in a second. All right, so here we are with the quilt. Again, I use a program called Procreate, and it allows me to kind of come in, take a picture of the quilt, and then I can draw all over that quilt. Um, in the first video, basically everything above this black line, we already talked about. I'm going to erase that black line because it's going to get me confused. But, um, so we're going to talk about the rest and kind of the process. So, um, again, everything up here is already talked about. We already know that I'm going to stitch the ditch around the iris chains because I really want them to pop out. We did some work up here with making nine patches. I wonder if I have the first video stuff on here. So this is what we talked about in the first video, actually. So, um, so I've already kind of did my stitches everywhere. And then I'm going to kind of come in here with my iris chain. So this block here, and I'm going to zoom in. It kind of stumped me because I'm like, oh, what do I want to do? I could come in and, you know, one idea was to, I'm going to make that a little thinner, come in and kind of make them almost like these nine patches, but it would be a four and four, a 16 patch and kind of do the same, uh, apply the same concept like I did up here to these nine patches down here. And, um, I just, I didn't, I didn't think I liked it. I wasn't sure. Um, you know, it would make this blocks kind of the same as these, uh, these Irish chain blocks. And see, this is just a four patch right here. So this is a very simple quilt. It looks really hard, but it's a lot of really easy techniques. Cause, um, so I could treat this like a four patch. 
and then come in and treat all of these like a four patch. And again, I'm like, oh, that's just going to be a ton of stitching, which wasn't bad. I mean, this whole quilt had a ton of stitching, but I just, I couldn't find something I really liked. I knew I was going to outline stitch around this and um, use some type of design in here. And then in my head, I was like, you know, this just needs to be perfect. So I ended up going with a pro stitcher design. So, um, so these all had a pro stitcher design because like I always say, I like to use pro stitcher to its fullest and it can do some things, um, a lot better than I can. So if I could have maybe come in and from the center, you know, done a swirl and done this all the way around and that would have been fine. I mean, it would have looked good. Um, I ended up using a design somewhat like that that I bought from Quiltable. Um, it was it kind of looked like an owl. It was really, it's a really cool design. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll link it below. Um, but this was kind of my first thought, and that's I was going to do the same thing down here. I was going to, you know, treat all of these the same because this here is just half of that. So it's kind of bringing congruent congruency. Is that the word? Um, similarity throughout the throughout the quilt the same thing how there's a circle here i put a circle in here i put a circle in here to bring this little element that i thought of up here into the rest of the quilt so you know i talked about this a little bit where i was going to use that circle and now each of these i put a circle in to continue that throughout the quilt using inspiration from in one place and bringing it down to the to the bottom and same thing here and now i'm kind of jumping around because add has kicked in and then all of those just got a stipple so every place those little circles are has it it's popped out a little bit but back to um our piece here i know i i need to do something good here because again this block is continued over here just in different colors so it's you know what's going on um actually well, no, we can talk about this and then we'll go to the fine geese. Um, in the end, I ended up looking at this and I'm like, what if I stitch that and I make a larger Irish chain that comes in and picks up, like basically creating this four patch here so there's a four oops there's a four patch there's a four patch so i'm creating a different block by pulling in some of that negative space because again i'm going to dense fill around this so this is the part that's going to puff and so there was uh i just did a swirl fill and um so any of this mm -hmm. Obviously, this is not a swirl fill, but this is representing my swirl fill. So anything that has the lines in it is now pushed down, and anything that doesn't is puffed up, and now you get this faux nine patch, which I love. I love the way it turned out. Um, I'm going to get rid of those swirls, or the lines, because now it looks like a scribbled mess and it will drive me crazy. So that was it. So I, this is what I ended up going with. I think it turned out fantastic. Some other things, um, again, I looked at elements and said, okay, well, this is my block. And up here, I can't remember if I talked about it, but I decided to echo all the blocks. I echoed everything um, by a quarter inch. So that way it really showed like, hey, this is a block here. And things stood out. And let's remember this, um, is it this one? This block is the same as this block down here. So um, I'm gonna, again, add the circle. And I can't actually remember what I did here. I think I just stitched in the, in this one, I just stitched in the, um, in all of the, uh, this is micro quilting, in all of the pink blocks to make the blue, pox, blue blocks puff up. And, I'm pretty sure because then this center, the center circle is also going to puff. Um, and then I have these flying geese, uh, these like flying geese blocks out on the sides that puff. 
this was all swirl fill where it's not the Irish chain or the um, negative space blocks. Down here, like I said, I went in and I was tr I tried a few different things. I wasn't sure what I really wanted to do here. I was going to kind of treat these like this uh, kind of windmill block, but then I brought those circles down. Uh, remember, in the stars, I used those pro stitcher designs. I ended up just stitching the ditch through this. And then I went in and I think on the light blue, I filled in the light blue. So the dark blue popped. Um, if you watch the video about um, stitching detail in the darker colors, you don't see it. So by stitching in the lighter color, not that you want to see the thread, I mean, you use monofilament, but it lets the, the darker color pop out. And there's not a lot of dark colors in this quilt. So by um, having it pop here, it's popping in the Irish chain and also popping over here in the black. It just kind of, again, brings some symmetry to it. So um, back to this weird, uh, this weird where I created the four patch. I was going to do that over here, but I also knew because I love flying geese and I like stitching flying geese in the negative space. I had this strip and I wanted to make a strip of flying geese just shooting across my quilt. So I decided to stick it one edge of it right here. And then I had to answer some questions. I'm going to echo that block right there. I had to answer some questions. Now, is it flying? Are they, um, like if the quilting was layered, are they living on the top? Are they living on the bottom? And I ended up deciding it was going to live on the top. It was going to be the first thing you see and everything else lives under it. So um, to be able to use my ruler good, I needed this stitched line. So I ended up stitching this line all the way down. And I just followed the natural line of the quilt. I echoed that line by a quarter inch. Again, because I wanted to let, um, to show where everything is and this is going to be on top. Then I used those two lines to line my ruler up. And, oh no, I used a straight edge ruler. So I, I, I kind of eyeballed where this first one would be. And then I used a straight edge ruler. I needed those two lines to keep everything straight. And I stitched, oops. I stitched another straight line down, echoed it, and then I came back in. Oops, what did I do? There we are. I came back in and I stitched in my flying geese. And I'm not going to stitch all of these. I'll just stitch them throughout. This is not easy to do upside down. Um... So, like I said, this lives on top of everything else going on. Because that's one of the things you have to decide, okay, I'm going to fill it in because now I'm annoyed that it's not all filled in because I'm crazy. Type A. And I think they were actually pointing the other way. So they're flying up towards the top of the screen. Um, after I did that, I could say, okay, now what places do I need to apply what's going on? Because remember, this is still nine patches all the way down um so like here i did decide what was going where and i can't remember 100 percent, but i think i treated this like a straight line and just did my four patch my block my block and then my four patch my block my block and then i was able to fill in those same thing here we have our four patches because we knew what we we're gonna do we just had to get there. <laughs> and I ended up treating this as one long strip too. So I ended up treating this as one long strip too. So basically this is my outline of the purple section. If you can hear the gardeners, I'm sorry. Or not, it's not purple, the pink section. Other than up here, for some reason I think I did this part first. So that was just Irish chain. Oops, I don't want that there. What did I do? Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Nope, nope, nope. Um, I'm hitting things with my hand. Um, so yeah, so I just continued this on. 
I know these are not straight. I'm sorry. I'm upside down. If you ever take a, a class from me, I make you stitch upside down and backwards. And now I feel your pain. And that cuts off there. Because this, again, is a block. And this is a block. So, um, so then I feel around there. I was looking at this, though, and I was like, you know, I want more detail in there. And I ended up using that same size and coming in and stitching more squares. Because, you know, you can never have enough stitching. They kind of echoed what was going on or fit in, I guess. Um, and like I said, you'll be able to see this in the final quilt. Because now it just looks like a messy scribbling on the screen. Um, but yeah, this turned out fantastic. I really, really like how it looked. I love my flying geese. Um, these just stitched the ditch and then filled around. So most of the white areas on this quilt were just filled with a swirl fill, which I, um, I love. Um, let's talk about these two really quick. So these two, um, I treated them somewhat the same. I ended up coming and stitching a square. And now this is the same size as all those squares I put the circles in. So then I put my circle in them. And because I was going to fill around the circle, that means that this area is already going to be filled up on both of these. So if I'm going to fill every other area to pop out, I have to leave the blue and I have to leave the white alone because they're going to pop. But then the next section, so this dark blue was stitched down. And same thing here, this tan was stitched down. Because every other section is going to have this to um, let the next one pop. So then I was able to leave these tan pieces up. And on this one, um, I took this little ruler and I ended up carving out these circle sections and then stitched around them so those little half circles popped just to pull that circle in more and on this one I did the opposite just to see what um, they would look like and I was able to stitch around these and it gave a really cool effect because same block but just those little two outside pieces totally changed everything um, these iris changed stitched around them swirled in the background so nothing fancy um, we already know that we did the um, the uh, nine patches to these um, this one down here same um, same thing I did up here I just stitched around to let every every other color pop so we did um, stitching there so in this one we stitched the blue and let the pink pop I hope I'm telling you the truth because like I said this was a while ago and I don't really remember but this is <laughs> I think this is right um, this one just like at the top all we did was stitch the ditch I didn't give any extra detail to it I stitched the ditch and then did my swirl fill in the background and last but not least, we have this little tiny area back here. Oh, I almost forgot this. So this quilt, let's go back to this one, um, this block. So I did the fills behind all the circles. Um, every other block I forgot was this same type of uh, pinwheel. So I did the same thing to, to all these pinwheels. And I filled in one of the colors all the way around so that you get these popped pinwheel blocks in um, anywhere there was these half square triangles on the outside. Because in essence, I was just like, if this were a whole quilt, this is what I would have done to the whole thing. And then in the final little section at the bottom, I had these uh, four patch, or I guess quarter square triangle blocks. Well, they look like it. They're really just half square triangles that get put together that way. But I was like, well, what if we just continue that same thing in our four patches we're using this block for inspiration so if i was gonna fill in the light pink on this on this piece i kept that same pattern so here i was doing the pink and then um this one it was pink but it was also some blue 
and then pink and pink and blue. So every other block was filled to make it kind of the whole thing across or the whole like four patchy look all the way across. So um, again, ways you can use your quilting to change the, the way the piecing looks and to kind of add some definition, especially like in this one. When you see this, when I start posting pictures, um, you'll really see how by stitching those um, kind of fake four patches and then quilting around it really makes it look like, oh my gosh, there's so many pieces in this, but it's really just the way it was quilted. So one last thing before I start showing some photos off, this strip. This strip had me really questioning what I wanted to do because originally I was going to go in and stitch it just like all the nine patches. It was a nine patch. I wanted to bring that technique into everything. So I was going to do it just like all the other ones. And when I got to the end of the quilt and I left it, um, I had stitched the grid lines, but I didn't do any fills. And I left it till the end because I was like, do I really want to fill this up? Um, I took a lot of pictures. And I really liked how this, it still has detail. I mean, it's still to stitch the nine patch and everything. I made it look like a strip hanging across the quilt. But by leaving it not as densely quilted as the rest of the quilt, it gives your eye a place to relax. So as you're looking across, there's a lot going on, and then you get a little relief, and then there's a lot going on. Um, same thing with these these bigger pieces since there's just um there's some detail stitched into it but it's not heavily heavily stitched you still see some puff and stuff there um it just gives you a second to like you know take a breath as you're quilting or as you're looking at it so i ended up ultimately i took a lot of photos like i said i sent pictures to a bunch of friends and said what do you think what do you think i'm leaning to this and some of them said no stitch it and some of them said, no don't and um, ultimately i decided i wasn't going to stitch it and i love the way it looks i did um like i said i took a lot of photos i looked at it where I could, you know, after I took it off the frame, because I could always put it back on the frame and add that detail, uh, I took it off the frame and looked at it where I can see the whole, see it as a whole, and I really liked the way it looked by leaving it, um, leaving it not quilted as heavily. So I really like how that one turned off. So um, here's the middle row. We'll start here. Um, some pictures of the row um, just basted down. Um, so that was my step one and actually let's just do it. I'll do middle row and then middle uh, uh, This part and then we'll just go down. So this is all some pictures of the quilt basted down and we'll just start up here um, Again, I just used a big stipple stitch. I have a video um, I think in basting down a whole cloth I think it's called and that's how I went and I basted this down. I basted the sides I did a big stipple stitch at five stitches per inch because that's my preferred um, stitch length when I baste and Did everything then I was able to roll back and forth to kind of do things um, The next step here's some more detail. I kind of went in and stitched my um, More detail, but not the dense detail so I added, you know, my boxes, I stitched all my ditches, did all of that all the way around. I did my flying geese. And the thing about like the flying geese strip is that I had to do it all at one time. So um, I stitched down one row. So I stitched as much as I could in my throat and then I advanced and then I stitched the rest and then I advanced and then I stitched and then I got to the next point and I worked my way back up and then I came back down and I came back up. So I was advancing and stitching this whole time or um, yeah, advancing and stitching this whole time. And then I went in and I added the geese working, I think working my way back this way because that's where the way they're pointing. And um, so I had this one long strip that was done before a lot of the other detail was done, but that is just the nature of how this one worked. I wanted to make sure everything was nice and straight. So that's how I had to do that one. Um, and then I could go in and make lines everywhere. Uh, then here's the photos of the finished thing. All my detail up in this, um, fake four patch section and the pro stitcher kind of owl faces looking at you, which I, again, I really, really like, but you can see how by stitching around those blocks, it really makes it look like a four patch. Um, you can see those circles that I pulled from the, um, the top block. That I started incorporating down all my swirl detail again swirl is my number one favorite design ever um, I can swirl any day of the week 
you can see how um, over in the long blue uh, kind of four, fake four patches, I'll call it, the blue bigger, blue and pink Irish chain-ish thing, the bigger one, um, you can see how I added those extra squares to just give it some more detail to it. And um, at the bottom, you can see those four patches or the uh, quarter square triangle, the fake quarter square triangle blocks, I'm gonna call it, and how we just stitched some detail, but also how we use the same application in the orange strips that we used at the top. So that is, I don't, does this quilt have a name? I don't know what this quilt is named. I'm gonna name it Fancy Schmancy. Um, but yeah, so that's this quilt. I wonder, let me see if I have my original drawings. Um, I think this is how I originally envisioned it. Remember, just because I draw it doesn't mean that's the ending, that's the way it's gonna end. But this was my original vision and um, some things came, some things stayed the same, some things are totally different. I really, really love this quilt. I love the way it turned out. I hope you do too. Uh, I'm gonna switch the camera around, see you back in a second. All right, everyone, so that is a little bit of my quilting process, um, how my crazy brain works. Um, I, like I said, I loved doing this quilt. It took about three days, seven bobbins of um, bottom line, uh, 623 silver, my favorite color. Um, a mono, I use Monopoly totally on the top. Um, probably size, I believe a size 14 needle because that's what Superior recommends. And um, I believe I only went through one hole in the barber pole, but um, I'll have to look. I, I just went to Superior's website, looked at their, uh, their guide for getting the best results, and I used all those because if, if they have a guide for it, why not? Um, thank you for joining me. As always, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. I'm going to try to do as many videos as I can for you during this move. It's Like I said, it's been hectic. I haven't seen my long arm in two weeks, and I probably won't see it again until after September 1st. So um, I'm doing what I can. Uh, at some point... I might find those rulers and be able to make a ruler video for you. Um, I'm going to have access to some long arms next week, so maybe I'll try to uh, see if I can throw some videos together um, when I'm on my downtime. I know it's going to be a very busy week, though. Um, so if I can, maybe I'll try to get some things recorded out there. But um, I miss you all. Thank you all for watching. Um, like, subscribe, hit that bell if I haven't said that anyway. Mickey, I hope you're watching. Uh, I know she's always telling people. That's our little joke now. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Adam So Fun, and that's SCW on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to have a good time. We'll see you in the next video, everyone. Bye.